are our number one favorite expert of our audience, of every single person that we have ever had on the show. You are also the expert with the highest number of YouTube views. You are the person who has driven the most questions to our inbox. We have a form on our mm. website that is ask a question. So in that form, in the DMs, and you are somebody that gets our listeners just coming back and wanting more and more and more. And I'm really excited that you are here to talk about your new work every single time that I sit down with you. I show up and I go, oh, I think I know what narcissism is. I've, I've, I've talked to Dr. Romney before, I get this, but I always learn something new from you. And what I'm really excited about is your brand new book has new research, new ways to think about narcissism, to spot narcissism. And so we're gonna cover all of that today. Thank you, thank you, thank you for being here. Uh, and helping all of us. Thank you so much, Mamie. First of all, Mel, thank you. I'm humbled. I'm honored. It, I'm going to say something interesting to you. I'm almost a little saddened that it was the number one episode. I'm like, I mean, I'm hyped, but you know, what I'm saddened is that that's how many people are being hurt. Every time I think we've dug deep into this, the stories, the experiences, because I have clients, for example, who have been in narcissistic marriages, relationships, 40, 45, 50 years, and they've said to me, Nothing like this was being said 20 years ago, 25 years ago, nothing. And maybe I might have taken different action at that point. And they said, so it's really bittersweet to hear this now. They feel less crazy, but they're still suffering and taking actions a little different now. So my point is that so many people don't know. We th I think everyone knows. And then I meet someone who says, this was a revelation. So like I said, that's why I'm sort of, I'm humbled, I'm grateful, but I'm sad. What's going through my mind right now is that this is my personal introduction to narcissism in terms of what you just said. So the first time anybody said to me that there was a person in my life who is still in my life that is exhibiting the classic textbook behavior patterns, repeated behavior patterns of somebody who is narcissistic was my own therapist. And I was talking to her about my anxiety and my grief and my confusion about this lifelong relationship mm -hmm. with this particular person. And my therapist just flat out said, well, you know, they are on the narcissistic personality disorder spectrum. And I'm like, what are you talking about? What do you mean? And she started to tick off all of these classic behavior patterns that I always thought were representative that there was something wrong with mm -hmm. me. And then of course I met you weeks later mm. and you and I have started this conversation about narcissism. And today where I wanna start is just let's cover first, what is mm -hmm. narcissism? Because the word is thrown around all over the place. You are the world's leading expert. You are now piloting all of this academic research around narcissism. What do you want the person listening to know about narcissism? So narcissism is a personality style. I think it's actually really important for us to break out of this conversation of it as a disorder because that's really muddying the waters. We really don't get to say someone has a disorder unless they've sat in a room with a clinician and that clinician has observed them and assessed them and issued a diagnosis. And where a lot of people get pushback is even sometimes a therapist will say, well, you shouldn't say your husband has narcissistic personality disorder unless you've spoken to their therapist, which obviously they haven't. And obviously the husband hasn't been in therapy. So let's call it what it is, which is a personality style. And let's move the disorder piece off to the side. Okay. So narcissism is a personality style. And it would be considered a maladaptive personality style because it's not good for relationships. It's a rigid personality style like most unhealthy personality style where there's not a lot of flexibility. It's not something that changes. Personality in and of itself is pretty rigid for all of us. You have a personality. I have a personality. They can only change so much, right? But with a, someone who's narcissistic, I like to view yours or mine as maybe like really, really solid jello. It's a little bit of flexibility. For I a you talking about my waist. <laughs> yeah, got, <no. laughs> got a whole lot of it right here. But the, um, the narcissistic person's is like cement. There's really no move, all right? So now let's talk about what it is. 
is a personality style that's characterized by variable empathy. And I want us to talk about empathy, Mel, because that empathy part is, gets a little bit dicey with narcissistic folks. Variable empathy, entitlement, grandiosity, arrogance, selfishness, the need for validation and admiration, um, a need for control, a motivation uh, by power, dominance. Again, that need for control. They envy other people or they think other people envy them. They very much often live in fantasy worlds. That's, that's sort of how it looks. Okay. All of that is around a core of insecurity. And that insecurity is the sort of chronic sense of shame that's almost volcanically trying to come up. The entitlement, the grandiosity, the arrogance all acts as the armor to camp, keep that tamped down. And so as a result, narcissistic people are very reactive when they're, they're, they perceive criticism, when they're frustrated, when they're disappointed. Why? Because it means they're not perfect. It means they're not the grandiose ideal that they've created for themselves to protect themselves from that cauldron of shame that's always bubbling up. That is narcissism. And the reason I put a pin in that empathy piece they're not devoid of empathy, right? They're not psychopathic. In fact, the, the challenge becomes, you know narcissistic people, I know narcissistic people, they're actually really good at sort of, if you will, faking the empathy. Their empathy is quite performative. It's very transactional. And narcissistic people know that empathy sells, that empathy creates social connections, and above all else, that empathy gets them supply. People like people with empathy. Like, oh, this empathy thing's working out for folks. So I'm gonna try this. They, oh, I gotta, uh, I, I'm worried about your feelings. How are you feeling? You okay? So they can turn it on long enough to draw someone in or convince other people that they're empathic. So they're able to almost use it as a tool, as a tactic, as a stratagem, in some cases, even as a weapon. So that's why I'm saying it's not fair to say they have no empathy or even low empathy. It's variable empathy. When they feel good, when their star is rising, when things are going the way they want, they are very empathic. That's why you will see, for example, a spouse may go up to their partner who had a great day at work. They killed it. And the partner's like, hey, tell me about your day. How was it? And that person's thinking like, oh, God, well, I, I, I got to tell you, I had a little bit of a hard day. Let me tell How can I help you? How can I help you? So that's the Wednesday. And on Friday, that same spouse thinks, well, he was so empathic on Wednesday, I'm going to tell him how this problem's going at work. Well, that same narcissistic spouse didn't have such a good day on Friday. Why are you telling me your problems? Do you think I have time for your stuff? All you do is complain about work. That flip from Mr. I'm going to give you advice and I believe in you on Wednesday to why are you wasting my time on Friday? That flip-flop is the narcissistic relationship. On Wednesday, he seemed like one heck of an empathic guy. So... Let's start with the narcissistic personality style mm -hmm. versus somebody who's just vain yep. or conceited. Mm -hmm. What is the difference between somebody who's a little self-centered mm -hmm. versus somebody that truly has a narcissistic personality style? It's such a great question, especially in the era of social media, right? Social media has brought the conceit and the vanity up to a level that's unparalleled in human history right? Do you, you, you and I are old enough. Do you remember back in the day we'd take a camera on vacation and we'd try to get that picture of yes. us in front of the monument? And then we had a lot of pictures with just our eyes and just our mouth, right? Yep. We didn't really try to take selfies because more often then we had to get the film developed. So now I've wasted like four of these precious Im Yeah. So you get that. Yeah. So now this idea of the selfie, the performative self, the branded self, and then how much we're looked at all the time, not only by ourselves, but by everybody else, has taken vanity and almost turned it into something normative. We got to keep that in mind, right? Okay. We have to view also narcissism on a spectrum, Mel, right? It's not an either or. It's not that you're a narcissistic or you're not. At the mild end of the spectrum, that's where the vanity hangs out. These are what I call more Instagram narcissists. Lots of selfies, look at me, isn't my dinner interesting? Isn't what I did this weekend oh so interesting? Please look at me. Don't you want to hear my review of the movie? No, Siskel and Ebert, I don't. You don't know things. Please stop. But that's the world we're in. Those people are annoying. They're immature, they're emotionally stunted, they're probably not the person you're gonna go to on the day you get really bad news and need support. They're those people, okay. right? Are they harmful? 
the pa- you may not want to be married to them. It would stink if they were your parent. This is the parent who is your friend, but was never really there with emotional depth. So if you had a significant relationship with one of those mild, superficial, narcissistic folks, it's certainly not good for you. If they're your friend, I always say have a few of those mild narcissists around. They're great to have for a party. Pop them <laughs> out then. So, but when we get to the moderate and severe ends, obviously it's a different game. So where vanity and superficiality become narcissism is when we get into those core elements of the empathy issues and above all else, entitlement. There's some really interesting research that came out in 2017 about the phenomenology of narcissism. And what I loved about this research is that the one pillar that is universal in all narcissism is entitlement. So if that vain person look at me, look at my breakfast, aren't like, look at my shirt, look at my right. this. But they're never treating a server rudely. They wait their turn in line. They don't think they're more special than someone else. I'm going to tell you now, I don't think they're narcissistic. So that vain person can just sort of be superficial, maybe a little vapid, maybe a little immature. But if they're not doing those sorts of interpersonally antagonistic things, not a narcissist. That is makes me feel so much better (laughs) because I like the distinction. It makes sense to me that somebody can be really annoying and vain and certainly social media is fueling Mm -hmm. a lot of this, but that's different than being harmful. Very different. And if I think through everybody in my life that I personally believe has a narcissistic personality style, the entitlement piece is there. Yes that there is that sense of I deserve better, I deserve this, this sense of being wronged or like kind of offended if your breakfast is taking too long or offended if you don't do what, you know, they want you to do. And so that distinction is incredibly helpful. Yes, it's everything because it's the entitled person doesn't just feel special. They have to be more special than you. Does that make sense? There's a difference. That's also something brand new that I've just learned from you. Yeah, that's entitlement. That distinction of entitlement and that they, and I think it's particularly helpful when you're dealing with somebody in your family. Yes. Or dealing with somebody that you're in a relationship with, that there's entitlement that is directed at other people, like somebody that is, you know, the bartender at a bar or somebody that is working at an airport and the line is moving too slow and they're aiming at them. But I think it is profoundly disorienting when it gets aimed at you and it's a family member or it's a spouse. What is narcissism? Narcissism is a personality style. Let's move the disorder piece off to the side. Every time I talk to you, I start to wonder, am I a narcissist? 